Well, would you look at who's returned to my little corner of the forest? Hmm. Welcome back, human. I've missed you. How have you been? It's been so very long. Oh. Oh dear, you do not remember me. How very disappointing. So, it would explain why it's been so long since you've come to visit. Would it not? Because had you remembered, you never would have left me alone for so long. As old as I am, the past few years have been an eternity to me. You still don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Well, perhaps I could jog your memory. You were younger than you are now. And by my standards, you are still very young. But you were barely beyond boyhood. You were upset that day. You'd had an argument with someone you cared for. And you had come out to these woods, untouched by time, to clear your head. You wandered and wandered amidst the ancient trees and along the glistening stream. You may not remember those days, but you would do that often. I used to watch you. You would wander along thinking you were alone, and you would sing, and you would talk to yourself and say the most amusing things. I soon discovered that you were clever and witty and charming, and you seemed a pleasure to be around. On this one particular day, though, you were so very sad, so very upset. I felt compelled to comfort you and decided to show myself to you. You were sitting right in that spot by that brook over there. <laughs> I will admit, I can be a vain creature. And I was very pleased with the way the light filtered through the canopy of the trees that cast me in a golden glow and shimmered in the hues of blue on my wings and the green flecks in my hazel eyes. <laughs> I thought that I looked my most enchanting self. And your expression when you saw me was most rewarding. I was not disappointed. And I dare say neither were you. Whatever it was upset you that day was quickly forgotten in the face of my beauty. <laughs> that first day, I told you tales of wonder and magic and taught you how to dance among the flowers as the fairies do. And we explored the secrets of the forest together, taking pleasure in each other's company. You returned again and again after that day. And on the days when you didn't return, I would watch you taking peeks into your life. Oh, no. I didn't follow you out of the forest. The cities and towns of men are no place for the Fae. But I would follow as closely as I could, and then peek in on you through every reflection, every mirror, every dark window every still puddle that could catch your reflection. I was there, watching you, 
and missing you. But time passes quickly for humans, and responsibilities drew you away from my woods. You went away one day, and you never came back. You'd gone far too far to be able to visit my forest. You did come and tell me that you would be leaving. And I did something I hadn't done in a very, very, very long time. It's not in a fairy's nature to be unhappy. But I cried bitterly that day. And you felt compelled to comfort me. And you told me tales. And we danced in the flowers. And then you left, promising to return. But I did give you something before you left. Do you still have it? Do you know? You still don't remember? It was a piece of obsidian, sliced and then polished to a glass-like surface that would reflect anyone who looked into it. It was one thing when I could see where you'd gone and follow you through one reflective surface after another, watching your comings and goings. But with you going so far away and getting on an airplane to do it. There was no way I could follow you through the trillions of reflective surfaces between here and where you landed. I gave you that obsidian and told you that you could always speak to me through it. And you did. You kept me abreast of what you were doing, how you were feeling about it, all of the exciting developments in your new life. But then the conversations, one-sided as they were, began to grow shorter and less frequent until eventually they stopped altogether. You did say one day that you were talking to yourself. And I believe that you believed it by then. Oh. Oh, you remember now. Oh, no. There's nothing to be sorry for. These things happen in the world of men, where the cold iron in so many of your buildings interferes with the magic around you, keeps you from feeling what little of it you had had centuries ago. You shared so much of your world with me before we reached that point, though. You would take that stone and give me glimpses of the wonders you'd seen of the things humans had built. Reflections of giant humans on walls that you called movies. Of giant contraptions that took many men up into the air and many men out to sea. All guided by just the smallest motion of one man's hands on the wheel. It was terribly clever of you humans to do that. You would often express amazement at some of the things I did, whether it was dancing with the fireflies or teaching you how to hear the songs of the stars, getting the 
crickets to sing a symphony. But that was no more unusual to me than blinking is to either of us. I think that what you have all done without magic is truly impressive. And you gave those wonders to me. Things I never would have seen without you. I will always be grateful to you for that. Oh no, truly. You don't have to be sorry. There is nothing to be sorry for. You fought a very long time to remember. And it's not in a human's nature to remember meeting the Fae. But you did. Even when you thought that you might be going crazy. And I'm so very sorry for that. I'm sorry that your world is so lost to magic that when you see it, you think that you're insane. But you did keep it with you. And you did remember. Oh no, no, no. I know that you think you've forgotten. And how is it you used to call it? Recognition but not recall? You do recognize me, even if you couldn't recall. I know that you do, because even when you didn't know who I was, I could feel your heartbeat quicken. Even when you didn't know what to make of me, I could feel you coming closer. And even when you had no memory of this forest, you found your way back to me. Your mind may have forgotten, but your heart knows me, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's not polite to fib to a fairy. We can't exactly respond in kind, and it puts us on our back foot. So don't tell polite lies to me. You do? Well, if you remember me, why did you say that you don't know me? <laughs> well, of course I wouldn't look older to you. But I assure you, the same number of long days have passed for me as have passed for you since that last time we met in my forest. <laughs> Is that why you came back to my forest today? To check and see if you could possibly determine if all those old memories were real or if you had just had a very active imagination. <laughs> well, I will tell you this much. Both things can be true. If you hadn't had the ability to envision me, you wouldn't have been able to see me if you hadn't been able to imagine feeling the magic, you never would have felt it. Speaking of, though, I wonder if you wouldn't mind satisfying a curiosity of mine. Seeing you speak into the obsidian, 
It reminded me of how you used to speak when you wandered through the woods before I revealed myself to you. Were you really talking to yourself? Or did you know I was there? <laughs> you clever, clever human, you. I'm so glad you've returned. Ah, come, this is unbecoming of a fay. And dusk draws near. Let's go dance with the fireflies. Shall we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey there, Cupcakes. Thank you all for sticking around for this long, and I hope you enjoyed that story. I've been on kind of a magic kick lately, apparently, so I hope you're in along for the ride and enjoying it. Uh, those of you who are still here, thank you so much for your time and attention, and also for your likes, your comments, your subscriptions. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It helps me out. And speaking of helping me out, thank you very much to the people who pointed out to me that I uploaded the wrong outro yesterday with my audio. I have a belated and repeated <laughs> welcome to uh, uh, Matthew and Alexander Moriarty, who I want to call Professor Moriarty now. Uh, Darnell confused Jimothy, and I don't know if that's a reference to The Office or if it's a reference to the Chris Barnett Either way, I'm I'm here for it because they're both fabulous, and I appreciate you, uh, confused, <laughs> and uh, Luis Amaripa. Thank you so very much for being my newest patrons. As always, I have to give special thanks to the people who go above and beyond, doing the most to make it so that I can do this five days a week. There is Lonely Fluffy Wolf, the hairdryer was a bad idea. There's Nosty, Rogue Scholar, Barry Wilburn, Steed, Anon, SLE, SLE, not Slep, Photo, Harper Evolution, Wolf9004, Vile Mouse, Succubus Slave, Malasilo, Army Guy 007, Mr. Fabulous, Bunny, Tiny the Taxman, Merrill, Inline Flaws, Anon, Red Death 48, Always Able, Moon, Old Bean UK, Kula Bear Forces, Swaggy Lama, Cody, Art Lowe, Pierce Talish, and Christian Kalepa'a. Thank you all so very much. I hope you will all be as good to yourselves as you are to me, and I will speak to you tomorrow.